China, a country that many Americans often view with curiosity for its breathtaking pace of development, has pulled off one of the most dramatic environmental transformations of the 21st century. In just two decades, from 2000 to 2020, China turned 5.53 million hectares of desertified land into thriving green ecosystems. That area is larger than the entire nation of Switzerland. During the same period, vegetation coverage in regions once ravaged by sandstorms increased by 3.2%. How did a country facing massive desertification pressure, affecting an estimated 27.4% of its territory, manage to achieve results so extraordinary that even the United States and Europe never expected anything close? And what exactly is behind this success? especially when China buried tons of dead plants under desert sands, only to see the land rebound a decade later. China's fight against desertification is not a local effort. It is a full-scale national strategy. Today, roughly 4.34 million square kilometers of land fall within China's desertification control zone. Between 2016 and 2020 alone, the country restored about 8.78 million hectares of degraded land, an average of 1.75 million hectares every year. And China did not stop there. In 2022, the country planted 3.76 million hectares of new forest. In 2023, another 3.96 million hectares of degraded land were restored. From 2012 to 2025, China has managed a staggering 24.33 million hectares of desertified land, including 1.86 million hectares within the nation's highest priority protected zones. One of the most iconic pillars of this effort is the Three North Shelter Belt Program, often called the Great Green Wall of China. Launched in 1978 and planned through 2050, it has already planted and maintained around 32 million hectares of forest while restoring 85 million hectares of degraded grassland. It is one of the largest greening projects in human history, and it is still ongoing. Most recently, in 2024, China announced that it planted and rehabilitated about 7.67 million hectares of forest and degraded land as part of its 47th National Tree Planting Day initiative. In the regions where these programs were implemented, Forest coverage rose from just 5% to nearly 13.84%, a measurable and remarkable reflection of long-term persistence. However, these massive tree planting efforts are far from simple. Many experts, especially researchers at the Beijing Forestry University, warn that as many as 85% of young saplings planted on barren soil will die. Why? Because sand does not stay still. Billions of tiny sand particles stretch across the desert with nothing to hold them in place. Powerful desert winds move the sand constantly, bearing new saplings or exposing their roots. Once the most fragile part of a young tree is fully exposed, its survival becomes only a matter of time. Imagine the harshness along the edges of the Taklamakan Desert, where tree planting is still possible to some extent. According to UNESCO, about 80% of the Taklamakan consists of shifting dunes that move up to 20 meters each year. In such conditions, no tree can survive. Its roots will either be uncovered or the sapling will be buried under a thick layer of sand. On top of that, deserts have no windbreaks, allowing violent gusts to strike directly, not only moving sand but physically damaging young trees. These dune fields and dry plains are also extremely poor in nutrients, causing many of China's green walls to wither and die quickly. Even so, the national spirit behind fighting desertification is incredibly strong. Every year on March 12th, China's National Tree Planting Day, millions of Chinese citizens between the ages of 11 and 60 enthusiastically plant three to five trees each or complete equivalent tasks. This is a deeply rooted tradition, so meaningful that many couples choose to marry the day before and celebrate their wedding by planting a new tree together. It is estimated that nearly 50 billion trees have been planted in recent decades, showing how ordinary citizens are actively participating in saving the nation from the encroaching deserts. But simple tree planting only works where the soil is still moderately healthy. In the harshest sandy regions, a different kind of solution is needed. 
And this is where China revealed its surprisingly ingenious tactic in this long battle, straw. The idea sounds almost too simple, yet it is brilliant. What is straw? It is the dry stalks and leaves of grain, crops such as wheat, oats, and rice after their grain has been harvested. These stalks are often left in the fields or used as animal feed. But China saw a different potential. As one of the world's largest agricultural producers, China generates an enormous amount of straw. In 2024 alone, with more than 29.9 million hectares of rice cultivation, China produced over 207 million tons of rice. According to the International Rice Research Institute, the grain to straw ratio is roughly one to one. That means China also produced more than 200 million tons of rice straw. When combined with wheat, corn, and other crops, the country generates nearly 1 billion tons of straw each year. Instead of letting it go to waste, China mobilized the surplus straw for a far greater purpose, stopping the deserts from advancing. Straw is used to create checkerboard grids across the sand dunes. The method looks simple, but in reality, it is extremely labor-intensive and costly. First, huge quantities of straw must be transported deep into the desert, a process that is expensive because of harsh terrain and long distances. Then workers dig shallow trenches and place the straw into the sand in the shape of one meter by one meter squares. About half of each straw stalk is buried below the surface, and the remaining half stands upright, forming a stable grid. All of this is done under brutal desert conditions, with scorching temperatures, no shade, and limited access to water. Yet the results make the effort worthwhile. These straw grids provide several powerful benefits. First, they add nutrients to the soil. Straw slowly decomposes over time, releasing organic matter and acting as a natural fertilizer. Scientific studies show that straw remains in place for about three to five years before fully decomposing, giving drought-resistant species such as Hedicerum scoparium and Caragana korshinsky enough time to take root and establish themselves. Second, the grids act as highly effective dust traps. A 2018 study published in the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health found that straw grids of all sizes significantly reduce wind speed near the ground, creating a weak wind zone around young plants. The one meter by one meter grid offers the strongest protection, not only slowing the wind, but also capturing dust and organic particles on the dune surface. This improves moisture retention, increases organic content, and enhances the chemical profile of the soil, all of which support vegetation. Areas protected by straw grids show far higher plant density and species diversity after several years compared to untreated land. Third and most importantly, the straw grids serve as a physical barrier that prevents sand movement. The grids stop sand from either bearing saplings or exposing their roots. Researchers have found that sand flow intensity decreases by as much as 99.5% when straw grids are installed, making the sand almost completely stable. This dramatically increases the survival rate of young plants in hostile desert environments. The grids also offer additional protection against strong winds, one of the main forces that normally destroy saplings in desert regions. However, installing millions of these grids by hand is extremely expensive and requires an enormous workforce. To expand anti-desertification efforts nationwide, China needed a solution that was far faster and far more efficient. Because of these challenges, China pushed forward with new ideas to mechanize the entire process. In 2019, a research team led by scientist Ku Jianjun from the Northwest Institute of Eco-Environment and Resources under the Chinese Academy of Sciences developed a revolutionary improvement, the brush net rope straw checkerboard Instead of using loose bundles of straw, workers twist the straw into long rope-like strands that can be rolled up, transported easily, and uncoiled rapidly across the dunes. This method mechanizes several stages, including rope making, laying the grids, and anchoring them into the sand. As a result, local authorities in Ningxia reported that labor efficiency increased by about 60% compared to traditional hand-laid grids. Even more remarkable is the improvement in durability. The new brush rope grids last as long as six years, 
compared to about three years for the old method. That means 60% higher efficiency and double the lifespan, a major leap forward in China's fight against desertification. China did not stop at rope-based grids. Engineers also developed specialized machinery capable of carrying straw, automatically laying it in strips and burying it in the sand. These machines do everything from forming the straw strips to digging shallow trenches and pressing the straw into place. Tasks that once required teams of workers wielding shovels can now be completed by a single machine. This raises efficiency by four to six times over manual labor. Although some regions still rely on partial mechanization, such as hand tools for trenching combined with mechanical tamping, it is still a dramatic improvement over the old shovel-based method. So the question is, do these straw grids actually work? The answer lies in one of China's most iconic engineering stories, the Baolan Railway. In 1958, the rail line connecting Baotu in Inner Mongolia to Lanzhou in Gansu province officially opened. The railway stretches 990 kilometers, with 140 kilometers cutting directly through the Tengger Desert, one of the harshest and most active deserts in the country. At the time, many foreign experts insisted that building and maintaining a railway across such a landscape was impossible. They predicted that within 30 years, the line would be completely buried under shifting sand. To understand why, consider the city of Zhongwei in Ningxia, located near the desert's edge. Residents there live with constant sandstorms so intense that sand settles into their rice bowls and people return home covered in dust. The region produces endless waves of fine sand that travel hundreds of miles. Maintaining a railway in such conditions seemed like an insurmountable challenge. Yet history proved otherwise. During construction, a worker accidentally stuck a bundle of straw into the sand with a shovel. After a severe sandstorm, everything around it was buried, but the straw bundle still stood. That accidental discovery became the origin of the now famous straw checkerboard technique. From that moment on, straw grids were used to protect the Baoland Railway. More than 60 years have passed and the railway still operates normally. The dire predictions of it disappearing under the desert never came true. It remains one of the clearest pieces of evidence demonstrating the extraordinary effectiveness of straw grids. Chapeau 2, a desert research station under the Chinese Academy of Sciences, and located right on the edge of the Tengger Desert is the living laboratory where the straw checkerboard method was first developed around 1957. Here, scientists tested how straw grids could work together with drought-tolerant vegetation. According to Chinese media reports, the shifting dunes have retreated nearly 25 kilometers from their historical position, creating an ecological recovery miracle that has drawn admiration from around the world. The sand protection system along the Baoland Railway received the National Special Award for Scientific and Technological Progress in 1988, and the Zhongwei Sand Fixation Forest Farm was listed among the global top 500 ecological projects in 1994. By 2025, China plans to complete a protective belt stretching about 153 kilometers along the southeastern rim of the Tengger Desert in Ningxia. This belt combines straw grids, hardy shrubs, and engineered barriers to form a robust ecological shield. The same innovation is now applied to modern infrastructure. In 2022, China opened its first desert expressway across the Tengger, part of a major route connecting Qingtongxia and Zhongwei. Constructing nearly 122 kilometers of highway through burning heat and relentless sandstorms was an engineering feat. To protect the road from shifting dunes, engineers built a multi-layer defense system that included a gravel belt and, of course, vast fields of straw checkerboards. This approach saved roughly 4 million cubic meters of construction material and over 600 million liters of water, while providing a far more environmentally friendly solution. Along the route, two service areas were built so travelers can stop and admire the vast desert landscape something once considered impossible. A similar achievement can be seen along the Taklamakan Desert Highway, a region often called the Dead Sea of China. This 560 kilometer route, much of it passing through the most dangerous sections of the desert, is protected by straw grids and shelter belt vegetation planted inside them. 
It is a testament to China's confidence and technical adaptability in conquering some of the harshest terrain on Earth. China also understands that the fight against desertification cannot rely on a single method. New sustainable technologies are being integrated. One of the most impressive is the one gigawatt Baofeng solar project in Ningxia, where solar panels are installed above desert land, while goji berries and other drought-tolerant plants are grown underneath. The panels provide shade and reduce evaporation, allowing crops to thrive while generating clean energy. Between 2025 and 2030, China plans to add 253 gigawatts of solar power across desert regions and restore about 7,000 square kilometers of degraded land. This is an area nearly four times the size of London. Yet it is important to remain realistic. This is a long and difficult battle. According to Reuters, China's desertification rate has declined only slightly over the past decade, from 27.2% to 26.8% of national land area. Recent studies, including a 2023 paper published on Science Direct, warn that climate change, decreasing rainfall, and rising temperatures may trigger new waves of desertification. There are still roughly 47.2 million hectares of recoverable desertified land, mainly in the Three North region, awaiting treatment. This shows that although China has achieved extraordinary progress, desertification remains a dynamic process that demands continuous effort and a long-term national strategy. From humble pieces of straw to massive fields of solar panels, China has shown the world that barren land can be transformed into a source of life. More importantly, it has demonstrated the power of persistence, innovation, and the unwavering determination to overcome nature's toughest challenges. This is not just a story about trees and straw grids. It is the story of a nation reshaping its own future and inspiring the world with what humanity can achieve when ambition meets action.